Well, you guys, Barry has to identify Ruth's body, and he may be a suspect in her murder now. Also, First Lady Victoria shows us who she really is. And we have the one and only Taja V. Simpson, who plays Priscilla Owen, in the building with us to give us a little bit of inside scoop, we hope. The review is up next. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz. Music. You know what time it is, right? <laughs> I'm going to jam out real quick, you know? Let's do after buzz theme music. <laughs> you get to drinking it. I got it in, girl, because we have, whoop, I had to wet my whistle because we have a lot to talk about. Welcome, 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 everybody, to your favorite television show, Oh, The Oval. Yeah. I am your girl, Carmen, and we are here to review The Oval, and we have a very, 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 very special special guest yes. in the building, Priscilla Owen. She plays Priscilla Owen, but her name is Tasha B. Simpson. Yay. And we also hey, have our hey. co-host. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Thank After Buzz Studio. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. We are so happy to have you here. Thank, Thank you for you. coming back. She's not a stranger to us, guys. Right. She's been on Black Hollywood Live, and mm -hmm. now she's here with us. Yes. We're so excited. grateful. Thank yes. you, guys. I'm, ha I'm happy that you guys cover the show. When I yeah. first saw the clip, I was like, oh, they are, yes, they are Girl, I love it. them. Okay. We, we, <laughs> yes, we is, are invested. Yes, <laughs> it is such an interesting show. It has definitely taken some twists and turns mm -hmm. that we were not expecting or ready for. Right. But, you know, we have you in the building to help us review tonight. Not a problem. Hopefully, I'm excited. It's great. I know. She you can't know. drop too much. I but. Know. <laughs> we know you can't tell us too much, but we have you here, so we're going to see what we can get out of you. Okay. So, so much happened tonight, you guys. Yeah. So much. This I was mean, a good episode. Mm -hmm. It was really a good episode. How did you guys feel about tonight's episode? I thought it was, I thought it was what I needed. We've been talking about how we're ready to like, for it to, you know, piece together mm -hmm. and we can get a little bit more insight of what's really going on in this family. And I think this episode gave us a glimpse and I'm just excited to see more. I, just keep it coming. Yeah. Because yes. I'm here for it. <laughs> now, you don't get to see it. You, today was your first time seeing yes, it, right? Yes, I watch it live with everyone else. How did you feel seeing it? You know what? I, it's so funny because, you know, obviously we read the scripts, and so, but you don't know how it's all going to come together. Mm -hmm. You don't know what your fellow actors are doing. Um, I knew, obviously, Gail was going to be tased. So every week when they're like, somebody can somebody do something to Gail. I was like, oh, it's coming. So yes. you just hold it on. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. And we got our Gail fixed tonight, yeah, okay? You did. I can't say that it was 100% right what the first lady did, but right. baby, I it think felt we right. all, it <laughs> felt right. That's what I do know. I think Twitter was split, right. like 50-50. Yes. Half was like, oh my God. The other half was like, that's right. That's right, Yeah, you know? That is right. <laughs> well, we got to see Jason creeping through the hallways, as always. Mm -hmm. A little bucky naked. Mm -hmm. What's Jason? up with that? I don't know what's up with that. I. That's what I need to figure out. He... I don't know if he did something mentally wrong mm -hmm. or I can't put my finger on it. I don't know if maybe, you know, sometimes people who are like that, they could have been abused as a kid or like mm -hmm. things like that for mm -hmm. attention. So, like I said, we just need to dig deeper into what is really going, what has happened in this family to cause Gail to be so crazy mm -hmm. and for him to be, sorry, not weirdo, but you know, weird. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. And just to touch on Donald, Donald is still trying to get rid of Kyle. Who? <sighs> And Kyle is not having it, right? Kyle is not having it. Why Kyle is, has to be on his detail. Why is Kyle so obsessed with Donald? We Donna? know why. They wow, fell in I love. Can't wait for that Did to they come fall out. in love? They fell oh, in what? love, girl, and he well, kicked we... him to the curb. I told you, I think Donald was experimenting. I think he was going through this experimental phase, and mm -hmm. Kyle was like, No, I want you. I love you. This is how it's supposed to be. And when Donald was like, No, I went in over my head, Kyle snapped. And that's why he's doing all of this crazy stuff, mm -hmm. hiring Bobby and all. All of that, it's... And yeah, Bobby kind of yeah. let on, but Bobby still isn't breaking. Why isn't Bobby breaking, you guys? Why won't Bobby snitch on Lily? I mean, because I, I, his job was to come in and do this. So, I mean, I guess maybe his loyalty is still to, to Kyle. Um, but maybe he'll snap eventually. I don't know. I or maybe he know. sees something in Lily that he likes. That's what I think. <laughs> mm, I think that okay, he thinks maybe that, that too. We, we spoke right. on that last week. We think that he think. I think that he thinks that Lily doesn't deserve... Donald, because he knows that Donald has been with Kyle. Mm -hmm. mm, plot twist. So he's sticking Whole around so he can just snatch it right on up. Now, what I can say is, amongst this group of crazy folks, the staff at the White House seem to be the exhale, like the, the breath of fresh air, mm -hmm. the sense of common 
common sense, I'll say, the grounding and right. all of that. And your character in particular is my favorite. Oh, thank because you. Because to me, Priscilla Owen, who is the supervisor of the staff. The resident staff supervisor. Resident mm-hmm. staff supervisor and also the chef. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing you don't do is mess with the person who is making Over your food. Over here, right? okay. Don't that do part. that. Don't do that. But to me, Priscilla represents a poised, articulate, elegant, educated woman who carries her crown, who cannot be provoked out of her character. Mm. But she will go That's there great. if she needs to. But she mm. goes there in a calculated... <laughs> this is good. I'm like, she, she like, is that me? <laughs> she goes there in a calculated fashion. Like, mm-hmm. you can't make her take a step that she doesn't want to take. She mm-hmm. holds in, in, in the information and she presents herself with an air of empathy. She mm-hmm. she tries to comfort Gail, what we'll get into later, she tries right. to comfort Gail. So it shows that even though she's able to observe everything that's going on she all she's still empathetic to this twisted right. family, family. Mm-hmm. was it hard it seems like it would be very easy because you seem like you carry this elegance with you oh thank in you your personality was it easy for you to connect to that character um only on the the surface parts where she's very meticulous and she wants things to be done a certain way uh-huh. like i have that in me a little bit mm-hmm. but not to the extent of the level of disrespect that gail gives me on a very regular basis yes. like my thing with disrespect i go from like zero to 100 in like 0.2 seconds mm-hmm. so i have to really be more reserved <laughs> yes. in this character is than it normal. difficult because watching the show my pressure goes from here to here <laughs> when i see how gail treats priscilla i'm like no she didn't right no she didn't throw that pillow no she didn't tell her to shut up like it gets me boiling is it hard to disconnect from that like after no because here's what's funny so I know the the actress who plays Gail okay right um one of my best friends name is Tasha Eason she's her cousin so I've been knowing her Paige her name, mm-hmm. her name is Paige for a long time so when, when we both booked the show, it was like, oh my God, yay, we get to work together. Mm-hmm. But after those scenes, there are moments where she's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, yes, thank you. Because uh, <laughs> yes, like, you really gave it to me at that moment. And I think that takes a special skill. Like, how do you learn to balance, like, I, this is only the character role. Like, mm-hmm. let me not, you know, break from this moment. How do you find that balance within yourself as an actress? Oh, once you commit, you just commit 100%. Okay. Mm-hmm. That you have to take yourself out of it. So once, you know, action's called, yourself is completely taken out of it, and then now I'm Priscilla, and I have to be this character, this role. Yeah. So, yes, I'm glad you caught up on the empathy, because I absolutely did. It gave yes. me a little bit more insight as Priscilla, why she is the way she is, because she's exactly like her mother and how she is. Yeah, she You know what is. I mean? She's like a chip off the old block. But at the same time, you never really want to see someone get tased. Right. I mean, that was a an extremity she wasn't used to being, you know, working yes. at the White House. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. But you guys, let's start with Barry. Ooh. The episode opens with Barry and his mother at the police station because mm-hmm. they are searching for his daughter who is still mm-hmm. missing. And a photograph is revealed because there's a mysterious woman who's popped up, stabbed to death. Mm-hmm. And Barry has to identify her and he sees the, the tattoo that says Barry and a scar that he recognizes and he says, that's Ruth. And he goes to see the body and he feels like his mom doesn't even care. Like, his mom is more concerned about Ruth than he is about her daughter. How did y'all feel about that moment? I was so over Nancy. (laughs) I don't know what this is. Like, I get it, you know. I I understand, like, Ruth has... It seems like she's had this hard, troubled life and she's Mm -hmm. went down this narrow, this bad path with joining this cult. But it's like... This is your flesh and blood we're talking Mm -hmm. about. The fact that you, I get it, you don't lie to police officers, but I was appalled that she stood Mm -hmm. there and was like, I mean, well, I went to sleep early, so I don't technically know, but I believe he was home. Like, Nancy, just, I would (laughs) have been like, where my lawyer at? I ain't answering nothing. And the look he gave, he was like, exactly. And then Mm -hmm. just because of the, just the principle that, let's not forget, this is happening because of you. Mm -hmm. So I was just really confused. I don't know if she just does not do well under pressure or, you know, because some people just can't handle that kind of environment. But I need Nancy to remember who is important at this moment. Now, remember last week when Barry was in the car, when you said, when Barry was like, Nancy was like, just give it to me, Barry. And he was like, Mom, sometimes you just act like a child. And I was like, oh, he yeah. took it easy on her. She is kind of a, like a goofball. I guess she is, huh? Slightly. But at the same time, we're talking about death. We yeah. are. I mean, but we don't want to, no one wants to wish someone's mother true. dead. No, that's so true. So she's the mom in that situation. So she's looking at it, I think, from a mom's perspective. 
Barry's looking at it from his perspective, like, well, whatever. She was already giving me trouble. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Because he hasn't had time to really process her right. being dead. And right. you're right, well, because that's why she let the child see Ruth. Because, because of that, like, he, I... She that motherly picked, instinct. Yeah, like, I mm-hmm. wouldn't want you, my son, Barry, being taken from me. So but, I'm going to, you know, go out on a limb and let her come over and see my child. Okay, well, child. okay, well, okay. Let's <laughs> skip. Let's skip to the part where Barry is Nancy's daughter, and Barry was like, "I was home all night," and Nancy's mom was like, "Well, I was asleep, but I guess he was." Mm-hmm. Like, did she slip a little bit? You saying you think she slipped? Do you think she was wrong for for not going along with his lie? Well, here's the thing. Nancy's character is like this God-fearing woman. She's okay. not used to that. Okay. So being put on the spot like that, okay. she was, I, she, she didn't know what to do. Lie. She couldn't True. lie. So okay. she's like, I, well, I, yeah, I was, I was, I was asleep. Okay. Yeah, but I, I'm more than, I'm more than confident that he was there. Mm-hmm. Like that's the best she could come up with on the fly. I have to be on. I have to be completely honest. She's a little more ditzy than I would hope my mom <laughs> is if we <laughs> no. ever find ourselves right, in right. this situation. Exactly. Like, mama, please just say I was there, mama. <laughs> I think my mom would have my back. Yeah, I was at home sleep. Yeah, she was asleep. I talked to Anne. I made a dinner. She was there. Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. (laughs) You know, I guess, I don't know. I will have to see. I don't know. But I I hope she doesn't crack more than that. But here's the scary part. Um, Not only um, are they dealing with the death of Ruth, but Mm -hmm. they're watching the news. Richard knows where he was at a certain time and day with Barry in the car when a gun goes off and a man is dead now on that mm-hmm. same block at the mm-hmm. same time. Right. So they have two murders that they may, you know, they're involved with mm-hmm. right now. Do we think, are we 100% sure that this murder was caused by that gunshot? I mean, poss- they That's didn't a get hurt. It's a speculation. Mm-hmm. It did go c- straight through the door. We saw the girl come out and scream afterwards. We did. So, so it's a possibility that that could be the case. And this gun is 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 going back to Gail's boyfriend. Really, at the end of the day, yeah, Pinky, Pinky. Mm, who just right. so happens to be the cousin who she also accused right. of raping. Right. Oh, oh, my God. God. a lot. It's a lot. Oh, <laughs> much to wrap my mind around. Well, we'll have to see what happens because Richard's job is in jeopardy now because of. The first, the 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 first man, the president mm-hmm. f- fires him because of the situation with Gail. Even though we know who's going to get that job back, mm-hmm. we'll talk about her in a little bit. Right. But there is a lot going on in this family so quickly and so unexpectedly, and the mom feels like it's all her fault. Is it all her fault, Nancy? Yeah, sorry, sis. Yeah. It is right. <laughs> it I is. was like, when she was like, it's all my fault. I was like, kind of is, mom. Yeah. Now, okay, I'm I'm getting confused on whether Richard is has really lost. I mean, we know that he lost his job, but I don't know if they're waiting to let him know, like, we know she lied, or what is that about? I have a feeling if Victoria says that man is going to get his job back, he's going to mm-hmm. get his okay, job so back. Okay, so we're just, it was just, we had a lot to cover. I think it was just, the, yes. I think it's the timing of it all. Got it, yeah. okay. Because so, this is still just day two. Yeah. True. You know true, what I mean? Yeah. So. Meanwhile, Sharon is at work with, with her bae. With, with, with her <laughs> With her ex bae. This, this man, Terry, is work in bae. love with Sharon. Right. Okay, and in walks the girlfriend who happens to live in the same neighborhood. It's a twisted It's a twisted tale, y'all. So much is happening. It's so, so much is much happening. happening. Which is interesting that... Um, Kareem is his character's name. Okay. Kareem brings Sharon lunch, and then the girlfriend brings Kareem. Oh, Kareem, Kareem. is not Terry? Mm, no. no, I'm sorry. What's Where it? did I get Terry from? So Kareem, Kareem is, is, in is, love with is in love with Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then his, I was just thinking it was funny that he brought her lunch from uh-huh. the vegan place 40 miles away, 40 yeah. minutes away. And then the girlfriend brings him lunch. <sighs> What's going to happen? And he's like, uh, uh, you, you, you see Sharon? She's like, I see Sharon. <laughs> what we saw in the preview, he said he slipped something up, like I'm still in love with you or something. Mm-hmm. So may, they clearly were together, maybe before Barry, and he just can't accept the fact that she has moved on. And maybe they started this pharmacy venture to get. Well, no, it's his dad's store that he's just mm-hmm. working in. Yeah. Um, are they exes? Know. Were they together before? Well, I mean, he was in love with Did her. They have so. a fling, and he just fell in love with her. Right? Does or was he in love with her just from working there? Maybe. Do you think the girlfriend knows that something has happened between those? I two? think in that yeah. moment, I think it was intuition. I think mm. she knows that that woman, that woman's intuition. When you know your man kind of have a thing for this, but you say it's nothing. And I'm trying to believe it, but hmm, mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Which I think that the actress played really well. Mm-hmm. She did. She a great did. Yeah. She was a really good actress. Yeah. I was like, she did her thing. I like You the, did. You said the, that right after. The, the, the eye, like the way she kind of was, you know, eye and Sharon. Mm-hmm. And I, she did a good job. Yeah, yeah, kudos yeah. to you, sis. She did a great job. Well, we have to talk about the first lady because she decides that she wants to take a <laughs> shopping trip, honey. <laughs> yes, dear. To scale oh. down her look a little bit. And we'll get into that in a second. But yeah. first, we have a slight shout out from the network. Yes, guys. So we just want to thank you guys for making us the ESPN of TV talk. If you are watching right now, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If you're listening via audio on Apple Music or whatever you use, please give us a five-star rating. And we just want you guys to know that we love you. We appreciate you guys tuning in and just giving us the feedback that we need so we can continue to give you guys this content and have guests like Taja here. We Ooh, love you yeah. guys. So <laughs> thank you guys and keep tuning in. Yes, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to give us five stars and tell all of your friends to subscribe mm-hmm. so that we can they, we can review their favorite shows as well. They can tune in when we review their favorite shows as well and keep this thing going. All right, moving right along. Queen Ice Queen Victoria. That's what they call <laughs> her on, <laughs> on, on That's the, what they her on Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Ice Queen, Ice honey. Queen, baby. Oh man, it's like where to start. Whew. Well, let's start. Okay, after after breakfast, right? She summons Lily right to the White House because she wants to go shopping, and there's a specific reason why in a specific store. She's found out where the mistress works, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she wants to pull up on the mistress. But you know, we don't know this yet. But we kind of figured it, you know. Um, but she 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 says she wants to go shopping, and she wants Lily to come with her. Um, and in the meantime. Gail is upstairs, and she's trying to get Picky to come see her at the White House, mm-hmm. and Picky completely curves her. Hard. How we feel about that? <laughs> I'm with Picky. I get it. You, you know, Picky's lifestyle. Right. It's right. like I can't deal with that. Yeah. No. Now you come with police. No, ma'am. I love the fact that Picky isn't trying to clout like clout chase at all. He's like, look, I know you're in the first family, but I don't want anything to do with that. I don't right. want that attention. Mm-hmm. He's not trying to go to jail, and his family works for the White House, and he already doesn't get along with that side of the family. We mm-hmm. saw that altercation with him mm-hmm. and Richard, I believe, a couple episodes ago. And Mom so, is not right. feeling it. Victoria is not feeling it at all. She doesn't think that this guy is good enough for her daughter. Right. Um, so, Gail decides <laughs> that she is going to go see Picky. Little Miss Thing. Even though Picky <laughs> said, don't pull up on me, Little Miss Thing has to have her way. She totally. does not know how to take no for an I answer. I wonder where she gets that from. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Right? <laughs> hmm. Who could she have possibly learned hmm. this, this, this uh, behavior from? Um, so she's th- she's about to charge up. This thing is about to charge her way up out of this White House. And Mama's like, you can't get out of here. Like you don't understand. Like you're trapped inside of these walls. Like this is a this is a low key like a fancy prison. You're going nowhere. And she decides that she is going somewhere to the point where Victoria decides to summon the the female CIA agent to tase her. Yeah. In the moment. She wasn't going for it. She said, ma'am, I'm not, I'm not tasing your child. I'm not tasing your daughter. She said, it won't be me. You won't fire me. <laughs> you won't now. fire me. Not for that. It won't be she said, give dog. it to me. Yes. And did it herself. And she did it herself. And tased her daughter. Taja, she tased her. Who does that? The first lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> the first lady right. did it, y'all. What were y'all thinking in that moment? Absolute shock. Did you think she was going to do it? I didn't. I truly did not think she was gonna do it. I, I thought it was just her way of scaring her because right. she's done it multiple times. Mm-hmm. She's she's. I can't remember one thing in particular, but we've seen her. Mm-hmm. Um, you mm-hmm. know, put fear in her. Yeah. So I always thought it was just you know another one of those motherly instincts. Like, all right, you're gonna try me, mm-hmm. and she just got fed up and was like, you know what, you making me look bad now in front of everybody. Exactly. So I'm gonna tase you, exactly. and that's what she did. Yo, I <laughs> and I, I agree with that though. I think Gail took it to the max. Because in yes. the first episode for the inauguration, when she gets right in her face because she doesn't want to get yeah. dressed, she's like, mm-hmm. wear this dress, not that one, and blah, 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 mm-hmm. right? Now, she's turning it up. I'm not. I'm going, whatever, whatever you say. She's not stopping. Normally, Gail kind of backs down a little bit, mm-hmm. and, she, and the first lady gets her way. Mm-hmm. In this instance, they were going head to head. She was like, okay. Y'all, she tased that girl. She tased I'm her, and then she beat herself. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was in. I was at a loss for words. Like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. But right. something in me was like, yes. But she also walked away. <laughs> I though. Go last. She didn't show no sympathy. Like you would expect she, as a mother to be like, oh my god, did I just do that? She walked away like, 
Job's done. Lily, let's go. Lily? Next victim. <laughs> well, she is called the Ice Queen, darling. Well. <laughs> Yo, this lady is up to something, and I don't know what it is, and I don't know why she hates her family so much. Mm-hmm. Why do you think she hates? Do we have any clue yet? Has any She's reclaiming her throne. Is that what it is? I think she has invested so much into this family. Mm-hmm. She no. She said that what Hunter, like you're president because of me. Right. And I think it's just all getting thrown back in her face, and she's tired of it. I think she secretly wants to be the president, and now she's upset that she's put all of her time into him, and now the family's a mess, and she's like, you know what? Y'all not gonna make me look bad. I gotta keep this family together. So she has an angle. And the reason why I know she has an angle is because I know I have an unpopular opinion about her demeanor. Mm -hmm. She is poised in a way that her attacks are specific. Even though she speaks to people in a belittling way, um, she goes for who and what she's going for only at that time. Like, she isn't, like, Gail, anybody can get it. But Gail doesn't have the experience that her mother has. So mm-hmm. Gail doesn't have the poise that her mother has. But her mother is very composed. Even though she she speaks in a very, definitely a belittling way, everything is calculated. She's not wasting her time on anybody or attacking anybody other than who she's going at. So I know she's getting, she is plotting and planning and she's going somewhere with this. I just have no idea where and why and I'm trying to figure out. Can you, can you, can you spell <laughs> any, any insight? Any? What you do you know think what I Priscilla think? would be thinking? Okay. No, what do you think? Okay. You, okay. You, go, Perfect. Go for, it. go for it. As Priscilla, I think it's a lack of love. Okay. Mm-hmm. The president is lacking something in his relationship. He goes to get it. The mother isn't showing them love. They're trying. They're acting out. Jason's mm. acting out. His way is doing. You know, he. Like everyone on Twitter is calling him a creep, but mm-hmm. he's walking around naked. And Gail is just her mouth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think because they're not getting um, what they need from their parents, mm-hmm. they have to find an outlet to like show out mm-hmm. whatever way that mm-hmm. is. Because the parents are clearly narcissistic, and so the children. Well, so, well, at least mm-hmm. we know that the the daughter is narcissistic too. Because of the way she treats Priscilla. Right. She tries to break Priscilla with negativity. That's like a main tool, mm-hmm. like weapon of a narcissist. They try mm-hmm. to break you right. with their own negativity. So I just, I don't know, y'all. I just, huh. But I'm not going to lie. I was like, she she needed a little, she, that's wrong. That girl got taste. That's messed up. But dang. But like, dang, she needed something. Right, right. But <laughs> I go the lie. sad thing is, it still didn't help. It's not going to help. Mm-mm. It sent her upstairs, and all it did was give Jason an opportunity to let her know that he thinks he found a way to sneak out. And she went for it. And, and see, and he needs it. something from her. So he's like, as mm-hmm. the as the brother being like, well, I can help you with this, sister. Mm-hmm. So it's like everyone needs something from someone. That's mm-hmm. true. And they're going to the extreme and the max try to get what they need from mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we're ever going to see them get on the same page. That's a good question. Well, anyway, moving right along. Lady, the first lady has taken... Um, Lily and it's all white. She's pristine, baby. Even mm-hmm. down to the white gloves. The gloves, honey. She says, yes. "I want to tone down my look. Take me somewhere medium trashy." <laughs> <laughs> That's how that was complete shady. Right. Yeah, it was a right. little shady. Anyway, they pull up and Denise. Is her name Denise? Denise, Denise is mm-hmm. there, right, prepping because she thinks the president is pulling up on her. Lo and behold, it's the first lady. Mm-hmm. The, the gag is the gag <laughs> is the first lady. So she tries to hold her poise, and then she realizes that the first lady knows exactly what she is. Do you think she? knew she was about to get a whooping? I don't know what she was thinking. I think in that moment, it was just like, whoa, like, okay, this caught, you know, this caught me for a loop. I don't think she necessarily thought, because, I mean, she came with the security, she mm-hmm. came with everyone. I don't think she knew that was going to happen. I don't think she knew that was going to happen. Baby, yeah. the first lady invited her to the back to help her try on of some her clothes. own mm-hmm. store. First of all, this is what I love what she did. She didn't even look at the piece. She was like, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> right. She knew. Oh no, can she you is. can you take me back there and show yes. me what that is? And never looked at the piece. Yes. And then niece, niece is like, okay, great. I'll just hang this I'll up right here for you. Up. If you need anything, okay. <laughs> she Y'all. takes her shoes off. Go ahead, you got it. No. Why did she pull that Vaseline and out Vaseline. Her bag like that? As soon as she pulled that out, I was like, oh, it's it's time. Oh, it's a W-R-A-P. It's time. And she didn't want anybody to handle it but her. Mm-mm. She was like, I got this. I mm-hmm. did not think she was going to go in there and do that. I thought she was just going to, you know, give her a little bit of mouth, you know, warn her, like, mm-hmm. this is my man. Don't, you know, mess up what I've built. Oh, no, ma'am. She went in there and let her have it all in one. It was like, 
It's all done. the way. <laughs> and picked up her Christians and walked out. <laughs> and seen. Y'all, as evil as this lady is, I started liking her this episode. I know. I did too. Did y'all like her this mm-hmm. I like her. She's about it. So look, they get back in the limo. She walks out pristine. I thought she was going to smack her with the glove, honestly, the way she had those gloves. I was like, she about mm-hmm. to pop this lady with these gloves. But they get back in the limo and she says, I know more about all the... First of all, she read Lily saw straight through her. All the way. She's like, she said, <laughs> she says all men cheat, they just all haven't been caught. Do we agree with that? I would hope not. The hope in me says I'm no. I'm right. I'm like, look. <laughs> I'm not even going to do that to men. I ain't going to do I that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to, I don't want to believe it. No comment. No comment. <laughs> I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. You're going to say no? I'm going to say no. Okay, so we have two no comments and one no. We'll stick with that. <laughs> but basically, um, she knows that Donald knows what happens with mm-hmm. her husband and about these girls that uh, Hunter is sleeping with. And so she wants an inside man of her own, an inside woman in this case, right. which is Lily. Do you think she brought Lily? Why do you guys think she brought Lily? Because of that. Because of that reason. Do you yeah. think she wanted her to see her beat that other girl up so she let her know if you get out of line, this could be you? Oh, she said Absolutely. it. She said, I brought you so you know who I am. Mm-hmm. So it was it was really like, mm-hmm. you have no... It, she didn't give her a choice. She said, you have no choice but to be on my side. You see how I dog walk this girl mm-hmm. and I would do the mm-hmm. same if you don't let me know what my husband is doing in that office. Man. That's a, that's a, a because tough situation in, to be in. In the first lady's, like position Mm -hmm. if i know that your husband is okay with my husband cheating on me Mm -hmm. then quite naturally he's okay with cheating on you exactly Mm -hmm. it's all about integrity at that point and then clearly he doesn't have it sorry no god right and then the way she calls her out about um oh you're the cheater Mm. yeah 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 yeah, she did she did she saw straight through straight through so I think it's safe to say that the first lady now has someone on the inside keeping eyes on her husband, mm-hmm. huh? She does. Woo, well, we also <laughs> get to find out that Priscilla is married to Sam. To Sam, yes. yay. yay. That, was, that was a brighter that mood. That was a brighter yes. mood. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so like, Sam and Priscilla, you yes. know. Are we going to see them, like, are we going to see more of that? Or we how are is going that going to gonna see, evolve? Yep, we're going to see more of Sam and Priscilla and their relationship and how it evolves, their home life mm-hmm. and okay. all that okay. good stuff. Yeah, It seems like they're going to be the dynamic duo. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what's next. It's hard to even predict what's next. It is. I mean, because you'll never know. Yeah, it's so many twists and turns. The show goes so left and right, right. Well, we got a little bit of clarity this episode. We got a little bit of clarity. (laughs) We had we 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 know that the first lady is up to something we don't know what, and we know she's specific about certain things. Mm -hmm. And we see her wrath. We know she's she from somewhere because she pulled that Vaseline out, so she knows a little something about a little (laughs) something, baby. (laughs) Baby. We don't know what's going to happen with Barry. What we do know is that there's a knife missing in Barry's kitchen. Mm-hmm. That part. But possibly we can save it. I'll save it for predictions because we'll say we can talk about what we think about that for now. But for now, we have, we're going to focus our entire special segment on our special guest. Oh, yay. I should be Simpson. Thanks, one. guys. <laughs> oh, yes. So, guys, if you are watching live, too, um, if you have any questions for um, her, feel free to type them in, and mm-hmm. we'll try to get some answers. Yeah. Guys, so I have a question for you. First okay. things first, how did you feel when you found out that you were cast for this show? Oh, man. I was I was grateful. Okay. I was excited. I was grateful. Um, we were all sitting in a room. So they flew us out to Tyler Perry Studios, and we had to do these, these chemistry reads. And that's where I first met Walter Fauntleroy, who plays Sam, who plays mm-hmm. my husband on the show. And they, they put us together, and he's like, oh, you guys are going to read this scene together. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Go over and meet him. We're both in, like, our zone. Like, okay, okay. Because there's a chemistry read. I went out there knowing I was already casting a role, but it's still, like, you want to have good chemistry with people. Mm-hmm. And so after everything's done, they call a few people to a different room, and Tyler Perry walks in, and he says, welcome to the Oval. Oh. And everybody's like, ah! Just imagine that. <laughs> Tyler walks in and just yeah. like, welcome to the Oval. Welcome yes. to the Oval. And just in general, like, just kudos to you. Like, yes. I've, I've seen interviews where you talk about, like, he handpicked you. You yeah. weren't like, yes. oh, let's go this audition. You were in Boo too, and he yeah. was just like, "I see something in her, yeah. and I want her," which is a blessing. That's yeah. a and blessing. I was so excited. I was like, "Okay." Um, like I said in a previous interview, I was like, "When Tyler Perry calls, you say okay." 
And yes. I, I was like, okay. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yes. And, but what I did not know was the magnitude of this. Like, I did not know yes. it was like, history being made. Mm-hmm. I did not know at the time when I booked it or when he called me that it was going to be the, a replica that was being built at his studio of the mm-hmm. White House. It's like 80% exact replica to the real White House. The Amazing. only one in like the states, mm-hmm. in the country really, you know. And so didn't know that. Didn't know that his studio at the time was 330 acres. Didn't mm-hmm. know about the Imaginist experience. Didn't know yes. that I was going to be able to experience all of that. So Tyler Perry has really cultivated history. He has. Yes. And you're yeah. a part of that. I'm a this part is, of that. You're yeah. right. It's it's like, oh and it's God. amazing. I'm like, I wonder do people really understand the magnitude right. of what this man has created? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about that event? Oh my gosh. You know what? I left that event feeling like I could dream bigger. Yes. That my dreams are too small. I realized that because I, I walk around and I'm like, wow, I'm at Tyler Perry Studios. I go to work every day and mm-hmm. I sit next to Tyler Perry. Mm-hmm. And typically, if I'm on a different show or film and I'm on a, a set, I'm on a lot or a set, I'm sitting next to a director or a producer of some kind. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sitting next to the man who owns Walt Disney currently, exactly. or the CEO of Walt Disney, or the CEO of Fox, or whatever television show it is. I'm not sitting next to him. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting next to greatness. Mm-hmm. Greatness. And you know you what I mean? Greatness. And greatness begets greatness. Yes. So now I'm like, okay, my dreams are too small. So now I'm in a position of kind of revamping mentally what my bigger goals that I thought maybe I could never do, mm-hmm. yes. that I'm like, oh, absolutely, it can be done. He has proved that. Yeah, it's he possible. proves it. Yeah. And as you guys can see, um, we have a red carpet shot of her at Yay! the grand opening of the studios. You look fabulous, Thank by the you. way. And um, one thing I did want to talk about too was your experience of meeting Bill Clinton. Oh, how yes. was that? You, yes. you discussed how he saw something, he knew yeah. that you were meant for that role. Boys. How did you take mm-hmm. yes. that, you know, from someone who was in the White House right. and knows what it's like behind the scenes? You know, everything happens to me after the fact. So I had to process it after the fact but in the moment I'm like oh my god that's Bill Clinton that's Hillary Clinton there's all these people over there but in the moment my publicist and I we walk up and we talk to him Mm -hmm. and she lets him know who I am and my role on the show Mm -hmm. and that's when he looked at me and said oh I can tell just by looking at you that half the role was Mm. cast just by you know, picking you, and I'm like, yes, wow, I fell out. that's amazing. <laughs> right, like on the floor hit, floor hit, boom, floor hit. Yes. Floor hit. Like seriously, and I was like, wow, thank you. And he was like, you know, there's a certain, you know, um, aura that goes along mm-hmm. with the yeah. staff there, Ooh. like a character that you, you know, you see in people. Yeah, and just from him merely meeting me in my presence was like, oh, I can tell that. That's oh, absolutely. I see it. Thank you. Yeah, I and I was know. like, wow. Well, thank yes. you, sir. Yes, I you see its volumes. So many, so many. Um, but then I got to meet Beyonce. Did, yes, did we have a picture of that. Isn't that funny? Oh, my God. <laughs> so Bill Clinton said this amazing thing, but Beyonce. But Beyonce. Right? Beyonce. <laughs> Listen, beehive. The Beehive, thank you. Yes. I'm a proud member of the Beehive, honey. Awesome. Come on, go bees out there. She's one to look up to. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think the thing about Beyonce that really hits home for me is that she's from Texas. I'm from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Nice. And we're just little brown girls from the South that's like made it. Yes. She's on a much grander scale, of course, but I'm like, yo, you have anything she dreams of, she decides she wants to do, she does it. She yes. works hard, she goes mm-hmm. get it. And that for me, I'm like, oh my God. And she makes it look easy. Like Beyonce makes things look easy, but if you've ever tried to step mm. into her shoes, you understand how hard she works to get there. The level of dedication. It and takes. it's a journey. Even mm-hmm. acting is a journey. Mm-hmm. Acting isn't something, becoming a superstar on the silver screen, small or large, it isn't something that happens overnight. Can you tell us about the power of belief and confidence and how it's affected your journey oh my to gosh. landing and coming where you are right now? You know, Especially absolutely. being a brown skin girl. Brown skin. Mm. And that's what I talked to Beyonce about. I thanked her for uh, making that song. Powerful song. It's so powerful. Yes. And the optics of it. I love seeing all different shades of melanin yes. in that. Um, and for me, that changed the optics of my life because growing up, I was a brown skinned girl, but I was mm-hmm. dark skinned growing up in the South and Lake Charles, Louisiana, which I love. Shout out to Lake Charles. However, I was discriminated against a lot because mm. I was dark skinned. Mm. You know, I grew up down the street from kids I couldn't play with because I was darker than a brown paper bag test. Like the brown paper bag test in I Louisiana, if you hear about it, like that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. So my, my confidence was really low and it took me a long time to be able to, you know, work through that. But now I understand the power of your words. I understand the power of belief. I understand mm-hmm. the power of your words are your wands. Mm. That's what I had to learn. Mm. So um, I'm a Christian, and one of the scriptures I, I love is, you know, speak. Well, my, my motto is speak life over your life. Mm-hmm. I believe that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So it if is. that's the case, then I need to decide, am I speaking life over my life mm-hmm. or am I speaking death? 
And oftentimes we want something so bad, we pray for it, we want to stand on the word, we want to have faith, we want to manifest whatever that thing is. However, we allow all this doubt and misery and all these different strife to live in our mind more mm -hmm. than what we actually want. Absolutely. I was guilty of that. Once I realized that, I had to do the work. So that builds my confidence, but I had to do the work and it's an everyday thing. It's like, there's levels to it. Mm -hmm. And there's levels to faith. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? So I had to go from, let's say, let's use money. Everybody can relate to that. And when you're trusting or believing for $500, that gives a different energy than when you're trusting and believing for 50,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Are you at a level of faith where you really believe that 50,000 will get to your way by the end of the month? Mm -hmm. Or is 500 more acceptable for you to be able to believe in? It's about the belief. Yes. It's about the belief. Ooh, I wow, believe. I got the chills on me. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I believe vibration precedes manifestation. Your belief is yes. the vibration that you put out into the world, into the universe, and that will that has to come before belief before you receive. Yes. You have to do that mm -hmm. before, but that's a mind thing. It, it is. It's a mind thing that you have to get control of your mind and your thoughts every mm -hmm. single day. I so agree. So that's 100%. the work that I've done. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Because it shows. Thank you. Because we appear, it doesn't always show on the outside that we all struggle with different insecurities and mm -hmm. different things that we have to overcome and we all just have to take the responsibility of doing that work and it changes your life. Totally. In such a, an amazing way once you grasp, grasp the concept mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what you just said. So mm -hmm. thank you now so you're much an for that. Yeah. To us. Now yes. we can see your testimony and go, okay, I can control my mind. Absolutely. I can get back on track. I can be who God has called yes, me to, to be, be. Yes. by just trusting that next dimension that he's trying to take you to. Because Amen. now Amen. You, Amen. You, Amen. <laughs> you are absolutely a working actress that is doing your thing. Yes. You yes. are an author mm -hmm. of the book called Cracking the Actors Co Acting Code. Yes. You are a director. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a movie named Lola coming out. Yes. So many wonderful things. So many wonderful things are I happening know. in your life. Yeah. And I'm really excited. Thank you so much. I'm yes. really excited about it. So, can you tell us about Lola, and can you tell us a little bit about your book before? Yes, you? yes. yes. Um, so, Cracking the Acting Code, it's a practical step-by-step -step guide to becoming a professional actor. Mm -hmm. So, anyone that's interested in acting, this book is for you. Like, this book will help you um, understand the styles and tones of acting from mm -hmm. film uh, to commercial. Mm -hmm. It will help you know what to do with headshots, resumes, reels, how to get an agent. That's the big thing. How do I get an agent? Mm -hmm. uh, but most importantly, understanding and knowing who you are and knowing mm -hmm. your type. Mm -hmm. All of that matters when it comes to acting. Mm -hmm. So that's the book. It's available on Amazon. Just type in my name, Taja V. Simpson, or type in Cracking the Acting Code. It'll come up. It's literally under 20 bucks. Mm. It's so worth it. Myself and Sabrina Emeryville and I, we decided to take all of our expertise and experience and put it in the book because everyone asks, how do I get started in acting? Mm -hmm. It's in the book. Awesome. Yes. And speaking of that, you being an author, a writer, and director, mm -hmm. how important is it for people who are trying to be an actress or actor, how important is it to be well-rounded in your craft so you mm. can be able to produce what you can to the best of your ability? Oh, absolutely. You know, the thing that I've learned from Tyler Perry is that you have to learn all facets of it. Mm -hmm. And it's something I knew about already, but when you know all facets of it, like as a director, my brain automatically is thinking about continuity. I'm thinking about how this is going to be edited. I'm thinking about all these different things as I'm on set. I can't help it now. Mm -hmm. It's just innately in me. But it's also in the seasoned actors. Mm -hmm. Like they know when you pick up the phone on this line, every time you do it, you got to pick up the phone on this line. Because mm -hmm. when they go to cut that together... You can't say something and then all of a sudden I don't have a phone on this line. Wow. Because mm -hmm. when you go to cut that, it's like, oh, man, she don't have a phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are we going to cut around that? You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like little things like that that I've learned from sitting with editors in the editing room, being a director, understanding the importance of all these different things. So if this is something, this is when people ask me, should they pursue it? If this is something that you cannot dream, you, you can't dream of not doing it, mm -hmm. then do it. But there's exactly. anything else in the world that you feel like you could be great at and you want to make money at that is pulling you, go do that. Mm. Because there's a lot of rejection in this business. So you have to have enough belief in yourself to know that you're going to make it. If there's one thing that you haven't done yet that you see yourself doing, mm -hmm. what is that one thing? Like, what is one thing you can tell us that you still want to do that you haven't accomplished? Oh, gosh. I want to play Shirley Chisholm. Come on. Mm. Yeah, Shirley Come Chisholm. Now. Yeah. I, I did her in a play. That. I did mm -hmm. her in a play. And so, I mean, I had the prosthetic nose, the little mm. mole, the, the mm -hmm. gap in my teeth, had the wig, the whole wardrobe and everything, and worked on her voice. Yes. So I know that there's a couple of actors that are coming out that are going to be, I'd say, actor 
in general, but mm-hmm. female actors are coming mm-hmm. out that's going to be um, playing her, and I'm super excited about it. But that's my role of my dreams. Powerful. Because of who she was and what she stood for. I love mm-hmm. it. You know, I love Shirley Chisholm. Well, I cannot wait to see everything manifest for you that Thank you, you. Yes. have your yes. eyes set on. I cannot yes. wait to see Lola. Yeah. When is it coming out? March of 2020. It's a boxing okay. film, and I play Lola, so I had to learn how to box. Yes, come on, box. Come on, box. Yes. <laughs> we need you to two piece Gail up one time. <laughs> right. I know, I know. Quick, <laughs> my boxing out for the show. Ability. We'll come out yes. for the show. Right, right. Can't wait to see that. And we're just so happy to have had you here and had the opportunity to speak with you about you. your experience on the show and to try to pry a little insight out about what's going on in this crazy Oval <laughs> Office. Know, yeah. But, you know, thank, thank you. Thank just you. Just thank you. Thank you so very much. Anything else you want to add? Um, I agree. I, I appreciate you coming. You low-key spoke a word over my life. Yes. Just here, so <laughs> I'm inspired. And just thank yes. you for representing us brown skin girls yes. and, you know, giving us hope in a future. I love Amen. it. Amen. Thank you. Thank That's you for saying that. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys for having me. This is so fun. And I love watching your show. Yes. I'd be like, hold on. It's Thursday. <laughs> and I'm about to watch the After Buzz and, and see y'all, what they talk about. And she pays yeah. attention. I know. Yeah. She watches it. We watch the show outside. She looks at the tweets. So she's yeah, involved. Yeah. She is definitely yeah, yeah. tuned in. Well, as far as the Oval is concerned, all we know for now is that there's a knife missing. We're hoping that no one in the house had anything mm-hmm. to do with Ruth's death, and we'll have to see what Victoria is up to next and Hunter and everyone else. And until Ooh. then, you guys, I am your girl, Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram at king underscore karma underscore. Oh, okay. I'm going to let Tasha go, but I'm going to let you go okay. last. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. You can find me on all social media platforms at underscore Tyra Prude. Yay. Same with me, guys. All social media platforms at Taja V. Simpson. And thank you to all the fans for watching the show. Yes. Thank you guys. We'll Thanks. see you guys next week. See you Bye. next week. Bye, guys. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.